This video is going to cover the electrical rough-in for the sawmill and kiln building. I need to bring quite a bit of power out because the sawmill is going to be electric and I also want enough power to run the kiln and be able to... It would be nice to be able to sawmill and have the kiln running at the same time. So I decided to run out 100 amps and set up a 100 amp sub-panel. put these in to staple my wires to. I thought six inches would be good, but it might be a little far, but it'll work. For the most part, a lot of the electrical will be in the wall that you're looking at right here. I'll have some outlets kind of scattered along, and that way I'll be able to plug in the heating system and the dehumidifier and all the stuff I'll need for the kiln. And then I'll also have a bunch of light switches that will control the fans and also the lights inside and outside. I'm going to make four of the switches three-way switches so that I can put some switches on the other side of the kiln that are closer to the house. So I can come out and turn the lights on in the sawmill area without having to walk all the way to the far side of the building. After nailing on the boxes where I need them, I went ahead and drilled some holes and then it's time to run some wires and connect all the boxes together. The sawmill will need about a 50 amp breaker. Dehumidifier actually only needs a 20 amp breaker and of that it only uses about 6 amps or so. And then I also needed a couple circuits for running some heat lamps. And I also wanted a couple outlets just for plugging stuff in. And then there's also two big fans that will go up in the ceiling. And then I also have a bunch of uh, exterior lights that I want to set up. But I got this uh, totally inadequate chicken scratch, but uh, I think I'll make it work. I think I know what, I'm, what I meant. <laughs> I got notes written on the wall, so that's good. Let's run some wires and clean up, clean up this mess. It's a new day. Man, is it a cold day. Oof, it's gotta be close to freezing out there. But in here, it actually feels warm. Or warm, warm. But last night I did some electrical. And I did most of it in here, actually. I just got a few more things to run. Okay, so I'm a dummy. So I just ran all my lights to the panel as if they didn't need switches. <laughs> Luckily, I haven't made it very far, so I'm just kind of rerouted these ones to the switches first, and then they'll, of course, I'll figure out a power leg to run to them once I figure out, once I get all the wires to these switch boxes first. Uh, I thought it was a little too easy.
Not a new day. It's even colder today. It definitely got below freezing last night. I still got to get that hydrant in over next to the pole barn, or else I'm gonna have a geyser. But anyways, um, if we were to do a little bit more electrical this morning before I do some more roofing, so. I'm gonna continue the process of routing my switch wires to the switches first before straight to the panel. That makes it very helpful when turning them on and off. All right, let's get started. See if I can get it through this way. Okay, since I neglected to mark which wire was which, this is the way I'm figuring out which one's which. So I'm just taking a wire and clamping it to one, and then I go up, walk all the way back to the house. And see, it should be this one here. Yep. It's funny, it gets a little reading off the other ones, but... That's the one. So I had to do that little test there to figure out which wires were which because I neglected to mark them before pulling them through the conduit. <laughs> but now that I know which wires are which, I can go ahead and hook them up into the panel and I'll hook them up into the house later.
and then on the panel itself because this is a sub panel I have to keep the grounds and the neutrals separate so you see that I've added a, a separate ground bar from the main bar that comes with the panel I guess that would make it make this box not bonded and so that's why I have four conductors going back to the house because it needs the ground needs to go all the way back to the main where it is bonded to figure out the size of the wires I just use an online calculator and you just input your distance and how many amps you need to carry and it tells you the size of the wire you need and I was sure to coat the ends of the wire in anti-corrosion compound and you see me wrapping up the pull cord there I left a an extra rope in the conduit so in case I have a I ever need to pull a wire for whatever reason in the future a pull rope is already in there all right so I've plugged all my breakers in and now I'm gonna land all my wires A couple of these breakers are GFCI breakers, so they have their own neutral wires that connect to the bus bar. And I use the GFCI breakers for my exterior outlets. All right, so far so good. So I got the top ones except for the sawmill power, the main power will come out of here and also uh, the main power for the InstaHot, which is in the box over there. I might do that after I get all these in. There's five or six, six wires that need to come up into here. Okay, so I open this thing up. <clears throat> there's no electrical connection, but there's this sticker here that says, there's no way to hook it up without opening this up. It doesn't come with any cord or anything. <laughs> I guess I'll be opening this up, trying to figure out how to hook up the wires because this is pretty much worthless. I just hope there's a wiring diagram inside, or at least I can figure it out. Wire connection. Hmm. Interesting. Uh -huh. All 
All right, so after a quick look at the insides, it didn't look too bad, and uh, I decided I can go ahead and run the wire, and it'll be easy enough to hook up down the line once insulation and the sheeting is on. The last thing I did was spray foam all my penetrations. Anyways, I'll give the full tour. So this is where most of the power comes in. You got the barn lights, exterior lights, and the exterior outlet. Exterior outlet. See how the power comes up here. disconnect this and just have it sticking through the plywood and so that it'll be able to just plug right in to a plug I'll put in there. This will just be a junction box. This is just a stop in the way. I put a, another pump power right here. So this is the, probably the one I'll use. For now I'll just put a junction box over that one. I mean a, a cover over that one. And yeah, I'll put a plug in there and I'll be able to plug my pump in and mount it somewhere in here. Now that's the junction box. That's where the power splits for all the exterior lights. One goes up and over to that one. That one's actually on a different uh, breaker so that I can have that one on by itself. At least that's I'm thinking in the future I'll just leave that one on. Here's where all the three-way switches go out. It's just an outlet I'll have. This will be for the dehumidifier. And that outlet also continues to one outside. There's nothing in this wall here except for that one. And nothing in this wall except for that light there. 